I'm joined by Oakland Mayor Libby Schaff after a big 23 to 2 win yesterday in the BCDC. That is a pretty large margin of victory. And also, I mean, I know two thirds vote was a pretty high bar to clear. So to clear it in such spectacular fashion has to feel really good after all the work you were doing. Feels great. And it also makes us feel good because we will be back in front of BCDC for an approval of the project itself. So this is a very good sign that we've made the case, not only that this should be taken out of port use, but that the project itself is so worthy. Yeah, I mean, that really does set the table nicely for what I think it was Commissioner Joya described as what would have been like rounding third and heading to home, getting that final permit approval. So you you got good responses from the commissioners, overwhelming support. Uh, you say that bodes well for the final step, right? <laughs> It does, but um, I really want to commend the commission. They did their due diligence. They asked tons of hard questions. Uh, and I really want to commend the A's and especially the Port of Oakland. They really provided all of that technical information about port business, uh, trends, cargo, uh, really a lot of technical things. These commissioners dug in. And so um, just the port staff did a spectacular job of explaining how port business has evolved and how Howard Terminal is just never going to be viable as a terminal again. Yeah, the commissioners really did seem to dig in with the exception of one who couldn't find Howard Terminal on a map. I won't have you comment <laughs> on that. That was pretty <laughs> awkward. <laughs> uh, how and, and then that person also voted no, which was weird, because if you can't even find it on a map, I don't know how you could even have a no vote on the thing. But uh, I digress. Uh, you were recently with the vice president, Kamala Harris. And I wonder, you know, being as how she has a background being from the town, did she ever ask you about the Ace Stadium and housing project? I'll be perfectly honest with you. I didn't wait for her to ask. I brought it up. I've actually talked to her twice now, once in her office in Washington, D.C., and then, yes, on the tarmac this week. Um, this is, I believe, one of the most transformative projects for the city of Oakland. I want everyone to know about it. I want everyone cheering and supporting it. And, you know, we, we do have a big federal grant in right now uh, that will be necessary for us to meet our offsite obligations uh, in a way that is, it, these are improvements we need today. They're not specific to the ballpark, but they are necessary for that ballpark to be successful. So that's a big focus of mine out in Washington, D.C., no, I was going to ask about that later, but I might as well just get to it now. The mega projects grant, something that the city is applying for, that would be a massive win and a huge help to get everything taken care of here. Uh, I guess I'll take this two different directions. One is the reason we don't have a signed and agreed to DA and CBA. Does that have anything to do with waiting to see what will happen with the mega projects grant? Certainly it would be more helpful if we had those grants in hand. Uh, we're very close to actually having secured enough grant money to cover all the infrastructure needs. Uh, and that is our commitment. We do not want to go into current city revenues uh, or to put our general fund at risk in the future. That's been a value that uh, I in particular have articulated from the get-go. Uh, but um, we have to keep the timelines that um, we, we inherit and two major grants, the uh, announcement deadlines have been pushed back. But let me just be clear, these are projects that Oakland needs right now. These are projects to help connect different neighborhoods more safely and efficiently to Jack London Square, to the waterfront amenities that we have today. And Oaklanders want their streets to be safer, to produce less pollution, to be more equitable as far as giving particularly West Oakland good access to the waterfront and to the downtown jobs. And so these are all great projects. We need them right now, but we know that they are necessary for this new neighborhood to be successful, um, particularly when it comes to the flow, not just of cars and bikes and pedestrians, but those trucks and trains that we want to keep moving from our port.
Yeah, and people watching this, like me, if you're a sports person, you're not familiar with grants and federal funds and infrastructure and all those things. There's two things I'd like to point out. Uh, one, if you guys don't get this grant, it goes somewhere else. It's not like you can use yeah. it for whatever you want. And, and the other thing is Howard Terminal, the the 3,000 units of housing, especially, uh, not just the stadium, but that's a massive magnet for a grant like this. These are things oh. that will really make the grant competitive for you guys, right? Casey, I mean, Howard Terminal is making people excited about this grant, which again, really isn't part of Howard Terminal. But the fact that it could make Howard Terminal possible is what is getting people excited about giving federal money that would otherwise go someplace else to Oakland, because it's not just saving the team. It's it's, and it's not just 3,000 of units of housing on Howard Terminal. Remember the community benefits would create more than 1,000 units both on and off the site in the surrounding neighborhoods of affordable housing. We need affordable housing. It would create more parks and open spaces. We know that's good for the health of a community. And um, I talked to the labor secretary himself. They are ecstatic about the job potential. 25,000 good union construction jobs with 25% apprentices and payment into this social justice fund that is actually helping uh, formerly incarcerated folks, former foster care, people that have been traditionally excluded from the construction trades to actually get these jobs. So huge benefits, so much excitement. Howard Terminal is helping Oakland get state and federal grants that we need ballpark or no ballpark. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And I, I know that if we're looking at what happened yesterday, that was a massive hurdle. It was one that could have really ended yeah. the project as we know it. Uh, so winning that really advances you to another round in the playoffs, so to speak. But you don't have a lot of time to revel in that victory because just next week, they're slipping something in in the uh, city council that could add an advisory vote, uh, trying to get the public involved in the voting process. I, I would like to get your opinion on that because uh, it came up pretty quick. And, and I'm not sure the way it really was introduced was very genuine, to be honest. But uh, that's just my opinion. Well, it is it is definitely a ploy by the opposition. Uh, it's been introduced by the one council member who has been a very vocal opponent of this project. Uh, I might note the only vocal opponent of this project on the city council. And in my mind, it is a huge waste of taxpayer money. This would be an advisory measure. It wouldn't even be binding. And it would cost your tax dollars a million dollars just to ask the question on a ballot. Uh, and then it would be a vehicle for the opposition to just continue to put misinformation in your mailbox, something they have already started doing. Yeah. And if we're going to jump forward a little bit, uh, when I talked to the A's president, Dave Cavill, yesterday, he had said that uh, maybe September, October could be a reasonable time to vote, have the city council vote. Uh, I'm happy to hear he's backed off the July <laughs> deadline because I just didn't see how that was even possible without a signed development agreement and community benefits agreement. But where are we with this DA and CBA? It's the same thing I've been asking about for a while, but I think it's it's everything. It is everything. And we have been working very hard. I mean, there are regular meetings scheduled with the A's to be constantly working out the deal points. I mean, this thing is going to probably be a stack of paper like this. It's, it's a lot of different legal agreements. And for good reason. I mean, Casey, you remember when the Warriors left Oakland, another painful memory, <laughs> although they're at least yes. still our team. They are still our team. Uh, but they tried to get out of their uh, debt payment on the arena improvements. We actually had to take them to binding arbitration and we won. But that's because the legal agreements were drafted carefully. So we are never making these mistakes again. We are not repeating any of these mistakes of the past uh, or letting sports teams um you know, screw cities. Uh, there's a long history of that. Uh, we're determined that this is going to be a completely different deal, one that is going to benefit all of Oakland for generations to come. Now, I had heard in, in other meetings and in other conversations, September could be a potential 
time in which this thing is wrapped up. Is that reasonable? Starting in September, we might start having some of the public hearings that will lead up to that final vote. And this comes back to the question of the ballot measure. Um, there will be so many opportunities for the public to understand this project and to weigh in on it. The number of public hearings that are going to happen between now and the final approval are voluminous. And the city council has already laid out in a resolution the different types of hearings that they are requiring this project to have to ensure that the public feels that this process has been transparent and has given ample opportunity uh, for weigh in. And one of those will be uh, September 20th is currently scheduled uh, a fiscal analysis, an independent fiscal analysis, just to weigh into that aspect of the deal. Um, the actual project, the uses, the land uses will be coming in front of our planning commission sometime in the fall. So there will be lots of steps uh, along the way to a final vote. But like Dave, I am determined that that final vote will happen before the end of this year, but I don't think it will happen until late November. Yeah, and what I was saying with September was just have a deal so we could actually look at the numbers, which is what you're saying would happen too. There'd have that, the numbers that, we could that look is at our and goal. everybody can discuss it. And then yes. a vote before the end of the year, I think yes. is, is basically make or break in my, in my yes. opinion, but that would be huge. Now, uh, I know it's not helpful at all to negotiate in the media. Right? <laughs> We're not going to do that. Uh, I'm not trained as a negotiator. I just sit here and talk to people. But uh, is there in your mind something that is the major hang up, something that is going to be a little bit more challenging, uh, something that is the reason why we don't have a signed deal yet? Well, uh, the community benefits are very aggressive, and I'm proud of that. I don't think that's something that we should back down on. And then how those get paid for. Um, there are many uh, different structures or funding sources. Some involve the government, in, including the federal government. The federal government has a loan program, a financing program uh, that is very favorable. But boy, you know, working with the federal government is complicated. So those are some of the things that are being explored right now. How do we put the pieces together um, to finance this incredible uh, development that won't be producing all of its revenues for, for a while. And so how do you bridge those gaps? Who puts the money up front uh, then to be recouped later? So those are the types of details that are being worked out. Um, but I think that there is a general agreement on the city cannot put its general fund at risk. We want the project to pay for the project. And that's how cities do redevelopment and economic development. You know, the opposition will will have you think that somehow, you know, it's it's a bad thing that we would use federal grant money to help make this project happen. That's crazy. That's our jobs. It's our job as a city to use um, the fi you know public financing structures to actually create jobs, create economic activity, increase our tax base. Um, this is this is what we're supposed to do with our tax dollars and our authority, and particularly in Oakland, our hustle, because we are hustling for those competitive grants to bring them to Oakland, because otherwise they'll go somewhere else. Yeah, and like we said earlier, the, the project is a massive magnet for those grants. So you led me somewhere perfect, which is exactly where I wanna go next. And I wanna do a little experiment here. I'm, I'm gonna act as if I am, Uninformed. I don't. I don't really follow this closely, as most people don't have the time and energy to do. That, that, that is not it's true of you, Casey Pratt. Not that me I know. <laughs> necessarily, but I, I'm a sick individual. I don't know why I'm obsessed with this, but uh, it's important. <laughs> I'm kidding. So what I want to do is is I will act as if I'm just on social media and I'm reading what I always see as the misinformation points. So as I ask these questions, maybe know that that I might know the answer to some of these, but I'm going to frame them in a way that helps for this game we're going to play. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. Misinformation point one, I see all the time. Mayor, why would you spend $1 billion of public tax revenue on this when you could use it for all these other things like schools and roads and all the other issues? Because, Casey, we don't have that billion dollars right now. 
We're talking about a billion dollars that would be generated by the project. We're talking about spending the tax dollars essentially of John Fisher, not yours. <laughs> so we're, we, and we won't have those tax dollars and some other tax dollars that this project is going to generate unless the project gets built. And so it makes sense to put, to pledge the new money that we do not have today to create that money and more in the future. Is that okay to get, yeah, to get but, me? But my argument there now is, is if there's all this money flying around, shouldn't the public be the ones that decide, not the, the city council that they elected themselves? So the public elected the city council to make these types of decisions. The public will have an opportunity to weigh in in every significant step along the way. And if at the end of the day, the public does not like the deal that the city council agreed on, there is a referendum process where the public could, by vote, overturn the city council's decision. That is how our representative democracy works. And I can assure you that this city council and the other agencies that all have some authority over this project are trying to be as transparent as possible, create as much opportunity for public input to be heard as possible. Yeah, but like the port is really important. How can you put a stadium right in the middle of the port? Well, the port themselves have said, this is what they want. This is what they think is the best for the Port of Oakland. They've laid out why this particular piece of land at the very end of the, you know, the channel that has to keep being dredged actually cannot ever be used as a shipping terminal again. They've been trying to lease it for 10 years as a shipping terminal and no one has been interested. And it is just getting more and more decrepit and uh, not adequate to meet modern shipping needs. So the port, who are experts in their own business, are the ones that have said, we want the A's development here. That is what is in the most interest of the Port of Oakland, the city, and the region. But the BCDC just voted to give 56 acres of the port to this project. What's next? When they take those 56, aren't they just going to keep grabbing more and more acres? Oh, you should have seen the due diligence that BCDC did to determine what the overall cargo needs are of the Bay Area, not just today, but into the future. They looked at different growth scenarios, different types of cargo, and asked, do we have enough capacity to accommodate a larger amount of cargo in the near future, not the distant future, the near future. And they said, yes. They said that we do have enough room to grow, particularly because in Oakland, we took the former army base and we've turned those, I think it's about 130 acres over into port uses. So that has that's doubled the size of the port in Oakland. And they found unused capacity in other ports like the port of Benicia. Well, I think that makes sense. It's me again. Um, I think that's important to do, though. Well, I'm because... glad that misinformed guy has gone away. Misinformed <laughs> guy. He was he was troubling. I, I don't necessarily want to say misinformed guy. Maybe just not having as much time to pay attention to everything and hearing all right, stuff coming all right. from all over the place guy and just doesn't know what's real or not. Maybe that's that's a long title. But, um, you know, the BCDC, the growth, there are three growth scenarios, you know, slow, moderate and strong in all three are growth scenarios for the port. So uh, I think that makes a lot of sense. Uh, Mayor Schaff, thank you very much for spending some time with me and that, that other guy. And uh, I really appreciate it. Casey, I appreciate the energy that you've put into this and that you are helping the public understand just how spectacular this project is going to be. Thanks.